uh, let me take a shot before we get started, right? That's okay. Oh. Oh my god, look here, looky here. We got one right here. Welcome back to Higher Thoughts with Dopely Faded, episode 6. Got a lot to talk about. I'm glad you guys are here. Hope you listened to the last one, because this one's just going to be even better. But if this is the first one you're listening to, then you don't know. You know what I mean? So before you listen to this one, go back, listen to 5, and then come to this one. Um... We're going to start with things that are grinding my gears, of course. I mean, what better way to start Higher Thoughts with some advice slash opinions on the things that grinds my gears from my life day to day. First of all, what grinds my gears is dust. And dog hair. Anyway, dude, you know what really grants my gears, okay? Dude, you're a loyal patient to a doctor for, um, you know, for months, years, multiple visits. Dude, you make an appointment for three months out, mind you. You know, I'm for like three months. And I happen to forget, and then I try to, I call him, and I'm like, hey, man, I, 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 I fucking, I, uh, missed my appointment. Can I reschedule? They're like, oh, no, you can't reschedule. You're gonna have to do a walk-in. Like, dude, that's how you treat your, dude, you make a lot of money off me, dude, and you're gonna fucking make me do a walk-in, and I'll have to just, like, sit there and wait hours. Maybe not hours, but possibly hours. I, I'm, it's not a good look, in my opinion. I'm not down for it. Um, don't worry about what I'm doing right now. Oh god. I had it set. I wanna Don't do relative, dude. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? It's gonna do relative on my ass. Oh yeah, it's five fifty, isn't it? What is it? Six fifty? What is it? Six thirty five. Six forty five. I don't want to. Anyway, what were we talking about? Dude, walk ins, dude. It's bullshit, dude. It's, my dentist made me do that. And, um. It's just not cool. You don't have to fucking show up and be like oh hey I missed my appointment last time so you guys said I had to do a walk in and they're going to be like oh take a seat and then you're just sitting there forever that kind of shit really grinds my gears I was just holding up my time dude you know you know what else fucking grinds my gears though even more than that is Facebook banning me for posting some awesome two gifs 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 of some awesome titty reveals like epic titty reveals like huge fat mmm mmm 
voluptuous fucking titties, right? And somebody, I said, I even posted with it. I said, if you report, man, your mom's a hoe. Somebody reported me, which I'm salty about because, man, not only did I get banned for 24 hours on Facebook, but, dude, those shouldn't have been taken down. That was a that was a work of art, you know what I mean? Um, dude, who hasn't seen a pair of titties before anyway, you know what I mean? What's the big deal? No big deal if you ask me. Like, what the fuck? Take another shot. Some technical d difficulties there. Dude. Another thing that grinds my gears, though, while we're on the subject, is fucking cops, dude. Cops that pull people over while they do the same shit. Mainly for tailgating. Is that what it's called? Pfft. Is that what it's called, tailgating? Or is that what when you party outside of a game? Ugh. I think it's both. Anyway... Dude, they pull you over for riding, not even riding someone's ass, but like being maybe, you know, you're supposed to be like three seconds following, and instead, you're like maybe two seconds following rule. And they'll pull you over, but meanwhile, when you're just driving down a road and there's a cop behind you, dude, they're just riding your ass so hard, and it's like, they, they, they're they doing that to make you speed up, and then they're going to pull you over, dude. It's just classic trap, dude. You know how many cops pull people over for, like, bullshit? Like, you know what I mean? Like, just make up excuses. Like, oh, you didn't put your turn signal on or your light's out or... You know what I mean? Like, that happens all the time. You watch the episode... You watch Cops or Live PD, you see they're like, oh, we're gonna... We, we suspect this guy's fucked up, so we're gonna pull him over and try to search him. And then they, like, pull him over and they're like, oh, hey, we, uh... We pulled you over today because you didn't use your turn signal back at that turn over there. Oh, you're acting nervous. You know what I mean? Like, they just, like, bullshit their way into being able to search you. Fuck bullshit, dude. Fuck piss me off. Not only does it piss me off, it grinds my fuck gears, dude. Dude, we were driving to Camp Bisco, dude, and fucking I got pulled over. Because... It's a long story, but, dude, I had no AC in my car, so, like, we dropped my homie off because he had to go into Walmart, and I was just driving around the parking lot trying to get some air in that bitch, you know what I mean? All of a sudden, pick my homie up. He comes out of Walmart. We go over to a fucking Penn Station, eat for, like, 45 minutes. You know, we're chilling Penn Station. And then I'm like, all right, let's get back on the road, head to Pennsylvania. All of a sudden, I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. We're getting pulled over. Get pulled over. And they're like, dude, first of all, the girl goes, oh, I pulled you over because you didn't use your turn signal. And I'm like, dude, I use my turn signal every turn, no matter what. Like, it's programmed into my brain. So I'm like, are you sure? She's like, yeah. I'm like, I would love to see the footage on that. Like, honestly, like, maybe I didn't, but, like, I'm 99.99999% sure that I use my turn signal anyway so she says that then so like it's a girl cop one cop alone and then all of a sudden after she t says that I look behind me and then there's like an SUV and then like two other cop cars and there's like there's a cop to the left of me and I'm like oh shit like at my window because she was at the passenger side window I looked to my left, there's a dude, cop, standing there at my fucking driveway, and I was like, oh, fuck, man, you scared the shit out of me. He's like, why would I scare you? And I was like, because I didn't know you were fucking there, dude. Mind you, it's hot as fuck, sweating. One of the people in the car have, like, two milligrams or two, uh, two doses of, like, ecstasy, you know what I mean?
So, like, I'm sweating, but I'm already sweating because it's hot. So, good thing it was hot. Otherwise, they'd be like, why are you sweating? Anyway, this, like, dude, it was like a team. It was like a sting team because this chick pulled us over. Then all of a sudden, she's like, well, I'm going to talk. I'm going to let you talk to my boss. Then, like, the lieutenant, like, the task force leader comes up. He's talking to me. Ask me all that shit, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go into details about that, but that that's for police stories. But anyway, then he goes, oh, well, I clocked you over. You're driving around the Walmart parking lot kind of suspicious. And I was like, I started laughing. I was like, oh, dude. I was like, no, nah, dude, I don't have my AC doesn't work. So, like, they probably thought I was lying, bullshitting. But I was like, dude, my AC doesn't work. We were trying to, I dropped my friend off because he forgot something. And we were just driving to keep the airflow you know so that I mean that just goes to preview like they were watching us and they were like oh these dudes are acting suspicious we're gonna pull them over I know I used my turn signal and then they pulled me over saying oh I didn't use my turn like if 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 they would have searched us and like found something and we got in trouble I'm sure we could have got that thrown out because I would have been like show me the footage dude that was an unlawful stop you know Another thing. That's just another thing around my gears, dude. Fucking cops, dude. Just like, they're so manipulative. Assholes. Don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Man. That shot was for all the times I've ever been in trouble. You know what else grinds my gears right here? I just saw something on my feed. <sighs> Dude, if you think Disney is going to turn Rey um, evil in the next Star Wars movie, you're fucking dumb as fuck. Everyone's like, oh, did you see her in the trailer holding the double blade red heat saver? I'm like, first of all, there's just so many reasons why you're dumb. Because, first of all, they did that in the last movie trailer having her hold Kylo Ren's lightsaber and everyone's like, oh, she's going evil, blah, blah, blah. It's just a red herring. It's misdirection, you know what I mean? They're doing it again. They're fooling everybody again. Dude, they're not She. They're not going to turn her evil. I agree that it would be good storytelling, but I don't think they're going to do it because Disney stands to make way more money if she stays the hero. If she turns evil, then that like gets rid of all the Halloween costumes and hurts merchandising because... All the little girls are going to be like, oh, Ray's a neat, bad girl. You know what I mean? Like, that's literally how little girls think. They're like, oh, she's evil. I want the true hero. And then they'll, 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 they'll literally start buying, like, Finn or whoever becomes the hero. Or Kylo Ren, even, you know? It's always good versus evil, dude. They're not going to make Ray evil, dude. That's just dumb. It's just a red herring, dude. Or a vision, or, you know what I mean? It's not what's going to happen, dude. If it does, I'll say I'm, I'll be the first to say I'm wrong and like whatever, but Ray's not going bad. I'm calling it right now. I know movies. I know Disney. <laughs> Disney's not going to do it, dude. I'm telling you, they're going to make so much more, more money. They're just I if they were about storytelling, then maybe depending on how they wanted to go with the story, but they're all about that money, dude, so, you know. They're gonna do whatever they got to to get that money out of the movie slash merchandising slash everything, you know. What else grinds my gears? A lot of things. It's hard. This week, we go on forever with this segment. Dave Chappelle recently came out with this Dicks and Stones special, which is fucking hilarious if you haven't seen him watch it. But, dude, everybody was trying to, like, cancel him, cancel culture's ass over it. I was like, you fucking idiot. And, like, luckily, everyone, like, the media was trying to do it, like, liberals and shit. And liberal media was trying to cancel him, but, like, everybody else, 
even liberal fans of his was like, nah, dude, this is hilarious. But, dude, what's interesting to me is, like, that just, because, like, dude, Dave Chappelle's been the same dude forever. Like, he's always had jokes about Michael Jackson, about pedophilia, about transphobia, about, like, everything. And no one, everyone laughed at it. No one freaked out about it. But now, all of a sudden, he says those same kind of jokes. And people are, like, trying to cancel culture and the liberal media. Like, oh, this is outrageous. Like, a comedian being offensive. We can't allow this. You know what I mean? And it's like... Notice how they weren't mad about any of the black jokes he told. Or the white jokes. They they were just mad about the gay uh, trans-phobia jokes, you know? It's just dumb, dude. It's like comedy, dude. We can't... This PC culture is just fucking shit up, dude. That's what really grinds my gears, but I'm glad that Dave Chappelle be- came out of that, like, unscathed. He was like, fuck, ooh, 420. Might as well take a hit, you know what I mean? But yeah, fuck all those people that can't handle Dave Chappelle, dude. Fucking pussies. If we pulled up the Young Turks page, they're probably still crying about his special, dude. They were the main ones that I saw trying to push for the cancel culture, dude. They were just, like, crying. They had gay people, uh, transgender people on there doing interviews, like, just crying about his special. It's like, dude, come on now. You can let someone else, like... Like you get upset. I feel bad for you, dude. You know? You're not as strong as you think. Um, let's move on. Recent movies. I watched Spider-Man Into the Spider- Spider-Verse. Finally, dude. That movie was pretty sick. I'm just watching it, dude. Like, a lot of people may not realize. I know they announced it or made it, like, they were talking about this for a while, but, like, how long it took them and shit. But, like, dude, to do animation like that, that movie took them so long. Like, such a good job on the artists. And the artists probably don't even get that much uh, recognition. Just because how the credits are presented, you know? Like, but I really wanted to start doing something where, like, I... All the movies I enjoy, I need to look at the credits and, like, start following all those, like, individual, like, artists and, like, stagehands, you know? And movie, uh, the movie crew. Just follow them and, like, you know, you could definitely learn something from them, from what they post. I've been meaning to do that, like, for, like, Avengers, Deadpool, like, just, like, all the cool artsy movies. Not artsy movies, but, like, movie with, like, a lot of graphical art. CGI. But anyway. What was I talking about? Recent movies. Other than Spider-Man, I think I can... The the only other recent movie I can think about is uh, Godzilla, dude. And that movie was pretty sick. Had some awesome shots in it. Um, the story was really dumb, though, like, how the mom was good, then she was evil, then she was good, and she pretty much caused the monster apocalypse for no reason, like, it was fucking dumb, dude, pissed me off. I don't even want to talk, I don't even want to get into it, really, I don't even want to talk about this, because, like, the Godzilla part was tight, and the fights were, all, like, the only lame thing about these new Godzilla movies is, like, the human aspects, like, the Brian Cranston was cool, but his son was lame, that story was lame after Brian Cranston died, it was like, oh man, Heisenberg's dead again, like, don't care, but, like, the Godzilla fight with the monster was cool, but they just, like, too, showed 
too much of it from like the human aspect, which is like I get what they're doing, but it's like we don't give a fuck, dude. Like, do like you could do a whole movie of just Godzilla versus a monster with no human story, like no story. It's just like they're on an island fighting for like an hour. Like you can make it work, dude, and it, people would love it. You don't have to do all that dumb. I mean, if you're gonna involve human elements and stories into it, dude, don't do some dumb shit where the mom's fucking evil or she's good, then she's evil, then she's good, and she does all the dumb shit. She causes the whole movie for no reason. Don't make your story pointless. You know what I mean? Like that's dumb. Make it like, make it meaningful. Like fuck, and that just goes to show you. They need fresh blood in Hollywood, dude. They need to hire me, dude. For like, I, I don't want to really do anything. I just want to be the idea guy, like, sl like the overseer of everything. I'll tell them what to do. I'll be like, no, 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 you need to do this. And then the artist, like, I'm gonna be like, you need to make it look like this. And if it's not like that, I'll whip them. That's the only way to make a graphic designer do what you want. You gotta whip them. I just got so many ideas, dude. I don't want to sit here and design slash create like and flesh out one whole idea. I just I want other people to do that. Like I want to be the dude at the top and be like, "Here's what you guys need to do." Like I got this idea for this movie or for this character or for a whole new concept or whatever. And then, like, make them do everything. You know what I mean? Because you can't create everything by yourself. So you gotta, like, get people with your vision and have them create it for you. <clears throat> um, like, if they hired me in Hollywood, dude, I could make them money. Because I watch every movie that they, that they come out with. You know, I love cinema. I watch movies, I'm like, pfft, horrible writing, pfft, horrible, you know, just horrible cinematography, horrible everything, like, not horrible sometimes, but even when it's good, I'm like, I had to make it better, you know? Um, yeah, man, Fresh Blood in Hollywood, they need it, um, we're going to move into some... Bro, there's dust everywhere. This dust accumulates like in a day. I just dusted all this. Anyway. We're going to move into a controversial... Controversial. Oh man, I'm almost out of... I need to go get another drink. smoking cigarettes now almost singed off my eyebrows there anyway look we're gonna move into a controversial uh, topic and that is I saw this meme that said straight men can love trans women and I'm like look dude I have friends that are gay friends that are trans friends that are all the letters right I don't give a fuck dude I'm down like if you're cool you're cool if you're lame, you're lame, and I'm not fucking with you, but, like, if you're, I don't give a fuck what your preferences are, you know, because it doesn't affect me. But anyway, when the, I hear that statement, I'm like, I don't think that's true, man, because, like, although I'm cool with, like, you saying if you're a guy and you want to be a chick and you're saying you're a chick, like, cool, now, we can still be friends. But, like, if a dude's with you, I'm going to be like, that dude's gay. You know? Like. 
pre-surgery or even post-surgery like i don't know dude that like that's just for some reason to me like it doesn't change biology and it's like to me that makes you gay it's not a problem it's nothing wrong with that but call it for what it is you know what i mean don't be like oh like there's articles written that are like straight men need to do their part and date trans women because they're depressed because they switch over and then they can't find somebody and it's like well I mean you can't force us to like you know change our preferences because they changed who they are you know it's like fuck You know? I just think it's hilarious that people are writing articles how straight men need to stand, stand up and, like, start dating trans women. Like, what? It's just like, what? Like, I don't... I guess it's a complex issue and I don't know all the ins and outs, you know? There's a lot of interested parties, but, like, holy fuck. That's just crazy to me. It's always the white, straight man's fault. <laughs> um. That was the controversy alert. Because it was on the news quite a bit. Not really in the news, but I just saw some memes going around. And I just thought it was hilarious. And it's just like, I don't know, dude. It's like can't force straight people to date trans I just if G's or B's want to fucking date the T's like or even if the straights want to date like whatever but like don't try to force people be like oh you know what I mean like let whatever love let love happen dude that's the fucking that's the motto dog don't try to force fucking love you know that's all I gotta say about the topic honestly we're moving on um you guys hear about the mac miller news i always stay up to date on the mac miller i'm in the reddit i'm in the fan pages on the groups everything favorite rapper still my favorite rapper dude had soul they just arrested another dude in connection with it um i don't know his name but it was the supplier of like the cameron and the chick the hooker the the pimp hooker chick um, they snit, one of them snitched on the quick, not quick, but I mean, within a month, I think, right? He's probably, I mean, he was looking at what, 20 years or something. I think they said Cameron was, so Cameron probably snitched. They, they didn't really say what the chick was looking at. They said they were trying to like find her or whatever, bring charges on her. But the dude was looking at at least 20 years. I think if I remember correctly. So you know he snitched out and was like, oh, this is the dude that gave, like, I was buying shit off this dude. I didn't know. So, I mean, he probably already was charged with manslaughter. I don't know if he can get 20 years for manslaughter. So maybe he wasn't. I should look it up. But, um, he's probably trying to take a deal for, to get like manslaughter five years and then charge the his dealer. Uh, what the fuck's going on here? Oh, oh. Uh, anyway, then charge his dealer, you know, or tell him his dealer so his dealer gets like the murder charge or whatever be like but then what if the dealer is like well here's who i get it from he gives him an even bigger dealer and he's like this is the dude that's put the fentanyl in it like because i mean dude they were selling a mac for a while it seems like so i mean they obviously didn't want to kill him came in the chick so obviously they probably didn't know that the shit was bad i don't know let's just type mac miller to the 
Second man. Third person is what we want. Second man. Well, second man. I think that's true. Maybe they did the arrested chick then. They're just saying second man because it's... Third person has been arrested. Steven Walker is accused of selling counterfeit oxy. Through in... See? Through an intermediary. 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 I can't talk tonight. I'm all drunk. But anyway. So yeah, this dude, Cameron Petit, Pettit, um, ratted on this dude for sure. Walker was arrested with a variety of drugs, including 10 blue pills, the counterfeit oxy. Shortly, shortly after uh, Max's death, law enforcement was discovered a magazine in McCormick's bedroom covered with blue pills and then didn't indentations indicating that more crushed and snore one or more of the counterfeit oxy pills containing fentanyl before his death text message revealed that Pettit obtained the blue pills from Walter by way of carrier Ryan Revis who was arrested damn wait so who what's Pettit's first name Cameron so there's Cameron then there's Ryan Revis I remember hearing about him so they haven't even arrested the chick yet. Ryan Revis, who was arrested. Gun fraud charges. Miller was found dead. Damn. It just sucks because, like, who who knows the real story, you know? Like, I'm sure Cameron, probably this dude, Ryan Revis, the chick. I mean, dude, they saw Miller as shitty as this because I love Mac Miller. But they saw Mac Miller as a cash cow, you know? They're like, oh, dude, this dude's a famous celebrity. He's going to be constantly giving us money for what we have, you know? They don't want to kill him. They don't want to wind up in a celebrity's death. I mean, who knows, though? I mean, maybe the... Um, who's the guy? Maybe the Stephen Walker dude that's, like, had the... He had a lot of shit when they arrested him, I think. He had guns and drugs and shit, so... He's obviously a big supplier, but... You know... Maybe he didn't even know that he had fentanyl shit, you know? Maybe the dude above him gave him shit with fentanyl in it. Maybe he, the dude above him didn't even know. You know what I mean? You don't, you just don't even know the story. You don't know how this shit happens. That's crazy. But, I mean, I'm glad people are being held responsible. I mean... They're just drug dealers that were caught up in this. So, like, they deserve to be punished. I don't think they des deserve to be punished for his death, per se, you know? Because, I mean, an addict's gonna be an addict, you know? You read those messages from the court documents and you can see, like, man, the dude was in a bad place. So he was gonna get whatever he wanted, no matter what. These people just happened to get winded up in it. But who knows the story? Maybe they knew. I don't know. There's a conspiracy theory is that he was sacrificed, so maybe all this is a cover. I don't know if I believe that, but just crazy shit. I did. Saw him live about five times. Wanted to see him live many other times. His live shows were fucking dope. All of his music was dope. Literally, to me, he's like the Beatles. He doesn't have a bad song. Even his, like, my n not favorite songs of his, I love. You know what I mean? Like, I could listen to any song by him and be like, fuck yeah, this is dope. It's crazy. Um, I just saw NF live. At the Clyde Theater in Fort Wayne. It's crazy they went to Fort Wayne. So it's cool that Sweetwater and like the Clyde are fucking bringing tight people here. He talks a lot about mental health and shit. So he's a tight rapper to listen to. I don't know, man. I know a lot of people personally that I've met that have committed suicide. And it's like, it's crazy to think like. I've been depressed. I've been in low, low, low places, but I've never wanted to kill myself. You know what I mean? It's like weird. 
I wonder, it's just crazy to me think, like, how low you have to be to do, be able to do that. And I could imagine it being easier if you didn't, if you were alone, you're like, I literally have no one, this isn't going to affect anybody, but, like, if you had, like, family and shit, you know, how are you going to do that to your family or, like, any acquaintances that are, like, close, close friends? It's just crazy to me. Mental health is a very important, dude. We gotta, you gotta make sure your mind's right. You know what I mean. And if you're thinking about crazy shit like suicide, you gotta, you gotta search out different options. You know what I mean? It's crazy. I mean, I don't know. People that commit suicide to me, it's like, well, if the, I mean, it's their choice. They want to die, they want to die, but I don't know. Shit's crazy to me. I don't, I don't know what the right answers are, but to me, it's kind of selfish. But at the same time, see, you think it's selfish because you're thinking about their loved ones, but also their loved ones are being selfish because they're sad that their loved one is gone, but they're not thinking about their loved one wanted to be gone because of how they were feeling. You know what I mean? They thought that was the only one, the only way out. I don't know, man. Complicated, but it's crazy. I don't think it's the right way. It's crazy. Mental health is fucking a huge thing that probably gets swept under the rug too much. You know what I mean? Speaking of mental health, let's talk about judgment, dude. What's the... I, I, I wrote it down in a reference. Um, let me see here. is the right one. Anyway, there's a there's a clip of Crystalia like Frank's red hot. I put that sh on everything. How about there's a clip of Crystalia talking about This Brad and Chad dude. So, um, there's a bunch of shit right now. This Brad and Chad dude that's on a boat talking shit. And he's like, dude, these guys are talking, I don't know what it is, but these guys are like talking shit to this dude. And he's, uh, but he's got this chicks in the boat with him and they're like, dude, what are these chicks doing with this dude? Blah, blah, like talking shit. I forget exactly how it is, but it's something along those lines. Which made me think of this interaction, not an interaction, but something I observed at Camp Bisco, like in the wave pool, of all things. Technical difficulties. But anyway, we were in the wave pool, dude. Me, my friend Austin, and my friend Brad Guy. And we're just floating. And there's these two, like, guidos, like, muscled out, steroided out, like... Obviously, all only cared about working out and then like trying to get chicks. And I just, I'm just looking at these dudes, and like I'm just like looking at everybody in the pool, and I'm kind of like just scanning the area. Like I, I like to observe people, you know what I mean, in their natural habitat. So then, like, all of a sudden, I'm looking, and I scan, and then the, those two dudes are in my frame, and then. And like, dude, like I'm think I'm talking Jersey Shore, like uh the, the what's his guy, what's the guy's name? Uh, 
poly d or whatever like they're all spray tan they got the spiked up hair they got the aviator like faded glasses shirtless like tat weird tattoos anyway so they're both standing together they're waist deep in water kind of like floating around they got the drinks so i'm scanning and then they're in my frame and then all of a sudden this big uh this bigger dude i mean look i say fat dude but like i don't discriminate like if you're fat you're fat but like that's cool you like to eat or whatever like you don't have a good metabolism like whatever dude i'm not talking shit when i say you're fat like that's just I, i'm fat dude i got the whiskey gut you know so it's cool it doesn't matter but if you're gonna be dicks like these two dudes were right so like these dudes pass by and this there's this bigger dude and he walks by but he's got two hot ass like chicks with him and like these two dudes were like disgusted they were like oh oh dude they were like dude and like they were like i saw them i saw this whole thing and they were like patting their stomach they were like look how fat this dude is they were like oh my god and he's got these two hot chicks he's like what, what were these chicks doing like they were almost like talking to each other i'm pretty sure like because they i like they were like can't believe those chicks are with this dude making fun of him and shit and then they kind of like and i'm just like dude these douches and then they kind of let it go and then they're like all right they're like I watch them point and they're like, oh dude, I see something. I'm gonna I'm gonna go over there. Like I'm gonna go talk to that chick. Like they're talking to each other. I hear them. And they're like, I'm, I'm gonna go talk to that chick. And then the guy goes and he starts floating, right, with his drinking. And then he's like, and then he 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 gets like two feet away from his friend. And then he comes back and he's like, bro, it wasn't the right move, dog, or something. Like I forget what he said. He's like, oh, she's with someone, or something. you know what I mean? It's just like, dude, here you are with like, here you are posing ass fucking with your big ass fucking all you do is work out body steroid ass fucking fake tan ass fucking jersey shore having ass making fun of like this fat like chinese dude that had these two hot ass chicks with him it's like yeah, you're making fun of him but he had fucking two hot ass chicks what, it, what what's your body and your fake tan getting for you nothing you're being a douche and you're afraid to talk to these chicks it's just funny to me, and it's like, fuck you, dude. We were at a music festival. It's supposed to be good vibes, and I just, like... That was the only bad vibes I got from that festival. I was like, fuck those dudes. I just hate people like that. Those dudes went, they were like, we're gonna get so many chicks, dude. Let's just go to the festival. Like, they don't even know the music. They just went there just to, like, chill in the wave pool with drinks, trying to get chicks. But then and they talked themselves up, like, oh, we're gonna get chicks. And then they, when they got there, they were too scared to even talk to chicks. You know what I mean? I saw them. I think those dudes left after that. They were like, fuck, let's just go home. You know, giving themselves a seat. These chick, every chick here is with someone, which isn't true, but they're like, you know, too scared to talk to people. So they're like, you know, giving them a way out, themselves a way out. Fuck those dudes. I just wanted to like go be friends with that dude that had the two hot chicks you know way more than like nobody wants to like th those dudes were alone like nobody wants to talk to like some guido not that there's anything wrong with guidos but like if you're a doucher like i don't have a problem with any kind of i don't know what guido is is like a it's not a nationality or a race you know but like whatever that is but like nationality race fucking if you're a guido if you're a hipster if you're a a fucking hippie if you're a fucking like whatever dude but it like no matter what you are if you're a doucher that over that like outranks everything so you're just a doucher and i'll treat you like a doucher and they're just douchers in every fucking race nationality slash uh label i guess anyway i just I watched Crystal Leah and he was talking about this this funny clip of them in a boat and he was talking they were like these chads were talking shit and just reminded me of this whole situation. Um Um I had I had a note written down for something as uh, something i wanted to talk about but i don't think i'm gonna make a whole video it's about the walking dead but it's like dude i've already talked about that on this podcast and i kind of want to just make a whole video for it because it's a lot you know so we can't really talk about that 
I'm going to take a break because I got to go down and get a drink. And then we're going to talk about just a couple more things. All right, dude, I'll briefly get into how they ruined The Walking Dead. I'm just going to say this. Like, I mean, what do we talk? This is why it needs to be a whole video on itself, because what are we talking about, the comic books or the show? I could do both. We'll do the comic books because it's like, dude, I just want to say this. I feel like Robert Kirkman just got tired of it. Because, dude, he was like in the middle of a storyline... And then he's just like, eh, I'm going to kill Rick, and then I'm going to do a flash forward, and then, like, it's all going to be good. You know what I mean? Like, it just didn't seem right to me. I was like, eh. Like, he felt that, he, like, he even knew so. He felt the need to, like, write a letter to the fans being, like, kind of, like, apologizing, but, like, not kind of explaining. But, like, I felt like it was a fake explanation slash apology. Like, I'm telling you. He was just, he wanted to move on to something else. Like, what's he doing now? I'm sure you could look it up and see, but I think he was tired of it because, like, the show was dying down. The, the, the hype for zombies was dying down, and he wanted to end on a high note, but it just felt wrong to me. I could, again, I could have been an overseer for that project and gave it such a better ending. Like, he, if he was tired of it, he should have handed it off to somebody, you know? Kind of like, what did, uh, um, George R. R. Martin did for um, Game of Thrones. He let the Dubais, I think Dubais, or I don't know how you say it, the Dubis, the Dubais brothers, or girl, I don't even know if it's brothers or a guy and a girl, or I think it's two of them. I think it's two brothers. Or it might not even be two brothers, but it might be one of them's Dubais, D U B I E S, or something weird. I don't know. Anyway. He kind of like let, because he was supposed to give out a book that get, would give him source material to finish the series, but he missed his deadline, so then he was like, well, you guys finish it. So they finished it on their own. Like, that's kind of like what Robert Kirkman should do if he was getting tired of it, because like, dude, dude, Rick Grimes should have been like the leader of the free world. He should have like restarted the world, you know, like. At the end of it, he, he was, like, president or, like, you know, grandmaster wizard and, like, you know, for him to just get shot in his sleeve, it's dumb. And then they're, like, they're, they're always, like, oh, dude, Walking Dead will always go on past Rick Grimes. Rick Grimes could die at any time. And then once he dies, we're going to keep going. And then he dies, and then the next episode, they're, like, well, this is it. This is the end. And he gave that bullshit excuse. He's like, I never liked knowing what was up. I like being surprised. That's why we did this. It's like, dude. Every artist slash creator knows, like, this dude was tired of it or something. Like, it was just such a cop out. Like, Rick Grant. Like, dude. It was such a good story. Even though the hype was dying down for zombies, like, I love the story, dude. And then they just finish it like that like, I thought like Rick Grimes was gonna be the leader of the commonwealth and then like they're gonna do some shit new storylines uh you know he was gonna like just he was gonna restart society but they made it dumb like since he died and then they skipped like 20 years forward it's like and he's like this like legend slash myth. They have statues of him and stories of him. And like we're living in Rick's memory. It's like, dude, that's not how it would be though. I don't know. Piss me off. We'll slip into the next segment though, which is, could you imagine? I'm trying to do little segments, you know, if you haven't noticed. Story time is coming up. For those who have been paying attention to story times. Story times are kind of the best. Alright. Could you imagine... Um... 
speaking of Walking Dead, this kind of plays into this because, like, I was just kind of overlooking the whole timeline of things and, like, lo- like the literal timeline of Walking Dead of, like, how many days each season is and blah, blah, blah. So, I was kind of, like, thinking about Rick's, uh, Rick's coma and shit. And it just made me do some research about, like, the longest comas and shit. Let's pull it up. Um... Because, like, have these guys been interviewed? Like, th- there's been people in comas for, like, I think the longest is 19 years. So, I'm going to call it 20. We're going to round up. Like, that dude's earned it. 20 years. Could you imagine, like, imagine how, like, I'm 20, i got to think, 6, 7, 26. Like, imagine, I can't remember much, probably when I was 6. I don't probably remember when I was, like, 10. I don't know. Anyway. 20 years, do you think of how much the world has changed technology-wise and shit? Like, imagine if you fell asleep and then wake up 20 years later. You got a beard, long hair, your body's all shriveled but older. And you're like... Excuse me. And you're like, where... What year is it? You know what I mean? Like, 20 years later, dude. Like, fuck, dude. 20 years later. The whole world's different like you like dude like you like you wake up and like all the equipment around like you would have you wouldn't even have seen all the equipment and the tubes in and out of you like medicine would be so different that you'd wake up in in the room and you'd think it was like a hundred years probably you know seven year comments great look here is this the guy 19 i think this is the guy i was reading about the second Let's just read them all. See, now, seven-year coma. Um, his story is truly unique. It lasted from 2005 until 2012. Car, caused by a car accident. Wait, unlike other coma revivals, his was sparked by a regimen of still knocks, a sleeping pill similar to Am- Ambien. So he was just taking a medicine and he... Got, dude, did he sue that medicine company based on amateur research conducted by his wife? Doc just agreed to choose. After five days of treatment, seven year coma was over. That's crazy. A railroad worker suffered his coma in 1988, so, in which was initially believed to be a work split workplace accident but was later attributed to a five centimeter brain tumor and eventually emerged from his coma in 2006 amid being overwhelmed by the abundance of foods in his local shop cell phones and the fall of communism unfortunately passed away two years after waking up from his coma the cause of death was a heart attack believed to be related to the coma oh i'm sorry i don't have this uh turned on Dude, that's crazy. Can we look up, like, the world in 1988? Like... Um, what happened in 89? Like, that's when George Bush was, George H. Bush was president. Like, can we look up a video? Like, I just want to see. Did Tiananmen Square happen in 18, like, 1989? Like, imagine just the world, this, and then, and then you wake up to 2006. Like, he said he was overwhelmed by the abundance of foods like dude was 
when was I mean he was past the Great Depression, but still, dude, like nineteen years, so much cell phones. Two years after he wakes up, he passes away. That's insane. That's interesting. Just like that's all they say about his interview. But I wonder if they they had to have asked him like, bro, like, what did you? Do you remember anything? Like he just, it's like him going to bed one night and then waking up the next morning twenty years later. Another car accident victim, Terry Wallace, suffered a brain injury that caused what turned out to be a record coma in 1984. 1988, so he was four years earlier. 1984, a pickup was thrown off a small bridge, Arkansas, killing another passenger. The accident left Wallace a quadriplegic, quadriplegic, quadriplegic. Yeah, but amazingly, he was still alive upon arrival at local hospital. After a few months, his coma had stabilized into a minimally conscious state, but there was little reason to believe Wallace would survive and regain consciousness. Those odds looked increasingly grimmer with each passing year. Wallace's wife, Sandy, and newborn daughter, Amber, were left to question if they would ever see Wallace alive again. Their questions were answered. 2003. 2003. I mean, I mean that's still crazy, but like... It's only four years later, and so 1980, I think, I mean, that's still obviously, like, a world-changing crazy, but, like, even though it's 1988 into 2006 isn't, like, I think even more crazier, because, like, once it got to, like, the 2000s, like, the evolution of, like, technology and just the society got, like, skyrocketed, like, way higher than 1984 to 1988, you know what I mean? So... I think this dude's story was a little crazier, even though this dude's crazy. This guy's is crazy. There's another one. I mean, maybe those are... It's just crazy. Um... What are we talking about now? Uh, that was a bit. It will, could you imagine? We wrap that up. Now we'll go to story time. I just want to talk about, as I say every episode, story time is kind of like my journal, you know? Just telling a story so I could look back on it. But my story time this episode is about my cousin Alex. This dude driving was something else. Every time you rode with him and he was driving, you were, you knew you were in for a good time, but also you feared for your life. You know what I mean? I remember one time we were driving. This is, this isn't before or after this. I, I can't remember the timeline of all of these events that I'm going to talk about, but this is going to be the first one because it's just the, this is just the, the, you know, nothing happened. <laughs> So it's just a sl little story. But anyway, we're driving over Coventry area, Fort Wayne, Indiana. And he's like, oh, uh, well, we're going, well, let's go back to my house. And we're over by like, a, at the time it was Kroger. Now it's a rural king. But he's like, let's go back to my house, which is this way. The opposite way that he starts driving. He starts driving behind um, Kroger and if you ever drove with Alex and you know behind Kroger there's like a railroad track with and it's pretty much a ramp so like if he started driving back there you knew to like you know hold on to shit and brace yourself and that motherfucker would get us 20 feet in the air and hit your head and fucking epic as fuck Another time, he's driving me and my brother home into my mom's rich addition. She lived in a mansion. There's like, it's like hills and curved grows. Look, dude. Right when we turn right into the addition, there is a curved road, and this dude drifts down it perfect. Like, just drifting perfect. Doesn't say anything. We don't, none of us say anything. We're just like enjoying the ride. And we go over the road and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it's just fucking normal sailing. And then we just go, we're on a straight shoot shot now. After all that crazy drifting on the downway slope, it's all icy, snowy, the middle of winter. 
we're going over this straight road and it's dark and he's like we go over this road and it's all it's all straight but it's a hill right here and we're going over the hill and he's like i have complete control of this car after he says that we pe we we reach the peak of the hill and we're going down and it's smooth sailing like we should just go straight but like after he said like god was just like this dude's getting cocky he said i have complete control of this car all of a sudden dude the car turns sideways and we're just sliding probably like a hundred feet and we're heading towards this bolted in multi mailbox you know what i mean like those met those uh those metal ones that are like each house has like a little fucking one and there's like a rows of four with like earth four columns with rows of four so it's like a shit ton of them dude we fucking just sled in like me and my brother my brother was in the passenger seat and i was in the back seat passenger side and the passenger side was sliding towards the mailbox and we were, we both were just like oh fuck boom hit the mailbox the mailbox flies out of the ground and it's bolted in flies out of the ground all the mailboxes like individual mailboxes open up there's mail everywhere on the ground dude Alex's car is like dented into fuckville you know what I mean like his passenger side has just got a big dent in it now we're like uh we should probably get out of here start driving back to my house I rode the bus at that time the next day I rode the bus and there's mail everywhere and I was like one of the chicks that got on I was like yo chick like it looks like someone hit your mailbox. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, what the fuck, man? Everyone's mail's all over the place. It's just funny. Such a good time. Look, though. Another time in Haverhill. We're heading down out of this. My dude's Alex's. Same dude driving. Same car. It was always the same car. We were driving out of his colder sack, cold sack. You know, to a T. Like, out of a T. And... I don't know what happened, but, like, he wasn't looking. Then we go up into the yard, and we, me and my brother are both screaming. We're like, ah! And then Alex, like, is, like, screaming, and we're about to run into a tree. He fucking veers it. The car turns, and we're like, phew. But then, like, a millisecond later, we're all screaming again because there's a fucking, uh, there's, like, a fire hydrant. And we're like, oh, fuck! Alex skips Alex uh, rotates it again, dude, and we dodge that, and then we're like, phew, but then a millisecond later, there's a, not the same kind of uh, mailboxes, but the a row of, like, eight mailboxes, and we're about to hit that, and we're all screaming again, and then Alex again rotates it, and then we bump out of there, dude, so we he, he rotated, like, we were about to hit, like, four different things, and he rotated, and just, like, we kept turning and turning and turning away from a disaster into a different one and then we finally got out best drive I've ever known dude whip that bitch there's other ones I threw up on the side of his car we got pulled over with a, and we had shit on the car and cop we got away cop didn't see, find anything it's crazy um those were the craziest car rides, though. That's story time for you, dude. That was, those were some great times, dude. I'm pretty sure I already told my 420 story about him, but... Um, we'll move on to celebrity news alert, dude. Cardi B supposedly got sexually assaulted. Now look. Everyone's all like, oh, Cardi B, like... Look, dude, I don't condone that behavior. I don't think anyone deserves that. I don't think anyone deserves to get robbed, stabbed, beat up, killed, or anything for bad karma or for anything they did in their past. You know what I mean? People deserve forgiveness. But that chick, like, last month was admitted to, admitted to drugging and robbing men, you know? That probably sparked some of this. I don't know what the story is. None of us do. Who knows? I'm just saying. I'm not saying it's okay. 
because I, I see people, other people bring up this point, and then other people are like, oh, you're so, so because she drugged and robbed men, she's, it, she deserves to be raped? No, no one's saying that, but I'm just saying, like, if you believe in karma and shit, it's like, maybe God threw that at her because, like, now she knows what it's like to be a victim. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm not saying it's right. I don't really give a fuck. It doesn't affect me. I don't, I'm not, I don't lose sleep about it. I'm just... I just saw it all up in my news, and people were debating about it on Facebook and shit. And it's like, who cares? Like, yes, yeah, let's care about sexual assault and shit, but and I mean, let's care about what she did to men. But like, people are like, why are you arguing about if she deserves it or not? Like, no one deserves that. No one's saying that. But I think people were coming out at the point like, if you believe in karma and like people get what they deserve, it comes around. Who knows what else she's done, you know? But like I said, doesn't make it right. Don't agree with it. Just saying. You gotta look at everything from just outside the box. And then take a shot. That shit rhymed. That's why I'm the illest alive. Oh my god! Next bit, world political news. Everybody seen that Greta Thunberg or what's her name? Bro. What Matt, it, she reminds, she's like the, uh, she's the David Hoggs um, of climate control. And it's like, she's a kid. It's like. And you see, you see her talk unscripted, and it's like, oh yeah, when you talked in this video, you had obviously she has a script she's reading from a paper, but like, you didn't write that. Like, you're a thirteen year, how old is she? Thirteen, sixteen, whatever, sixteen year old kid. Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. People using political, like they're using them as kids as political chips, dude. That's just such a fucking show, dude. It just pissed me off. Whether it's the Democrats or Republicans doing it, like, don't use kids. That's dumb as fuck. Piss me off. My final higher thoughts for this episode, we gotta end it. We're over, going over time, but hopefully we'll cut out about 15 minutes, make it an hour. Anyway, my final higher thoughts is, I don't like to get political on this. This is not the show for political nonsense, but... Don't use kids. Let kids be kids. You know what I mean? You know, what, what What did I just watch? There was a... I think it was Walking Dead and they are like... And, and Rick said, it's my job. You can't, you can't tell your kid that the world's ending or whatever. You know what I mean? So whoever told this chick... Like, this chick... Got her childhood robbed from her, dude. She's living in the Walking Dead universe. But instead of zombies, it's climate change, you know? Because Carl got his childhood... You know what I mean? It's it's a metaphor, slimly. Anyway. Like, if, like you know what I mean, though? Like, chill the fuck out as a 16-year-old. I don't know. It just seems like it's fed from her. Fed to her. I'd be saying the same thing if it was on the Republican side. It's just so dumb. Don't use kids. Robbing their childhood, dude. That's episode six. I think we're done, dude. We gotta cut at least 15 minutes out of this. We're fucking done. That's episode six. Episode seven's coming before the end of this next month, October. Stay tuned. I might film it tomorrow. I might have enough material for tomorrow. Fuck it. And release it tomorrow. Stay tuned. That's why you should subscribe to this YouTube channel. Peace.